Hi, I'm George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California. In this video, I'm going to go over section 1.1 for students in my online class. I'll also have pointers for the rest of you watching along. First definition we have in this section is that of a whole number, which is a number such as 0, 1, 2, etc. To graph a whole number on the number line, draw a number line, and we start to label the whole numbers, beginning at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And if you were asked to graph the number 5 on a number line, you would then put a dot at that point. Inequalities. This expression is read A is less than B. And we say that the number A is less than the number B if it's to the left of B on a number line. For instance, 3 is less than 5 because on the number line, 3 is located to the left of 5. We say that A is greater than B. if A is to the right of B on the number line. So for example, uh, we say that 4 is greater than 1 because again if we look on the number line, four is to the right of one, so four is greater than one. An integer starts with the whole numbers that we just discussed, zero, one, two, three, and so on, but it also includes negative numbers that are the opposite of the whole numbers, negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on. To graph an integer on a number line, we do the same thing as we did before, except now the number line goes all the way to the left and the right, indicated by these arrows. We put zero in the center, and let's say I wanted to graph negative three on the number line. I start at zero and I count three units to the left, and I put a dot at that point. Two numbers are called opposites if they're the same distance from zero on a number line, but they're on opposite sides of zero. For instance, the numbers 4 and negative 4 are called opposites because they are both four units away from zero, but they're on opposite sides of zero on the number line. By the way, the number zero is its own opposite. Going back to inequalities for integers, the same rules apply as they did for whole numbers. We say that a is less than b if a is to the left of b on a number line. So for instance, negative 9 is less than negative 7 because if we put these two numbers on the number line, we'd have to count 9 units to the left to get to negative 9, but we'd only have to count 7 units to the left to get to negative 7 because negative 9 is to the left of negative 7. It's less than that. This is a little tricky for students sometimes because we think of 9 as being a bigger number and should be greater, but the opposite is true when we're talking about negative values. So always remember the number furthest to the left is less than the number furthest to the right. If the situation is reversed, we say that A is greater than B if A is to the right of B on the number line. For instance, 2 is greater than negative 4 because on the number line, 2, which is 2 units to the right of 0, is farther to the right than negative 4, which would be 4 units to the left of 0. Finally, the absolute value of a number is that number's distance from 0 on a number line. Um, the way that we write absolute value is we put a number inside of vertical bars. So for instance, that's read as the absolute value of 7. And what we're trying to figure out is how far from 0 is 7. Well, we know that 7 is 7 away from 0, so the absolute value of 7 is 7. Um, say we were working with a negative number, like negative 5. How far away from 0 is negative 5? 
it's five units away, so its absolute value is equal to five. For those of you in my online class, the suggested homework for this section, problems one through four, the vocabulary problems, and five through 63 odd. Um, if any of you out there have a question or a comment, or if you have a request for a video that I can put on YouTube, you can reach me through the contact page on my website, which is at georgewoodbury.com. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope to hear from you soon.